edition of the DH Post Game Show. I'm Joshua Benson, your sports editor here at the Daily Homesman, and I'm joined alongside Zach Boyd over at the Sports Desk. Zach, how's it going today? Uh, it's great. Great day to be a Tiger, getting the win over the weekend. Yeah, man. Speaking of the win, 59-22, this offense was dominant over Georgia State Panthers. And the one guy, Daryl Henderson, uh, the running back, look, four, on 14 carries over 230 yards, amazing, two touchdowns. What do you say about that? I think you got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line as well because they created a lot of those holes for Henderson to run through. I think if I can just remember uh, one drive where it, just, it was like a two-play drive, mm -hmm. One was the jet sweep to Pollard on the left, on the right side, and then they went back to that right side with Henderson, and he kind of cut his way through and knifed his way through all the way into the end zone, you know. And you know this guy, he's been doing this for like the last three years. This is, I believe, yeah. his third his third year here, and you know he's getting a lot of attention because of his runs and how well he is running uh, per carry. Last year he had what 14 to 16 yards per mm -hmm. carry, yeah. and that led the nation. Uh, Overall, and then this year it's, it's still the same. Like he, he's like he had 14 carries again mm -hmm. in this yeah. game, and then he has I think total if I'm not mistaken he has like 30 carries or 30 some carries overall, and he's still leading the nation per carries and yards with that. So he's he's been doing his work of making sure that you know he doesn't get tackled and you're making it difficult for those guys to get down. But that offensive line too. Give those guys credit for creating those holes. That's very true, and I mean, you made a very great point. At the end of that game, Henderson led the nation not only in touchdowns, but also in yards. And we talked to Henderson about that after the game, and also mentioned how he is the second Tiger to have back-to-back -back games only in, in Tigers history, back-to-back 200-plus -back uh, rushing yards uh, after D'Angelo Williams. I mean, I'm not really a big got on numbers and stats because, like like I said, our backfield is very talented, and I want us all to get the ball, so when I get the ball, I just try to do my job. Does it mean anything to you to be mentioned in the same breath as Daniel Williams, one of the greats here? I mean, he did a lot for this university, so me being mentioned with him, it mean big time to me. Staying on the offense, uh, you know, Brady White, when they went up to Annapolis, he struggled a little bit, a lot of controversy coming along with that, but Brady White did his thing. He completed 19 of his 26 pass attempts for 269 yards, five touchdowns, his longest uh, throw was 48 yards. What did you see from Brady White that made you think, hey, you know what, this guy could possibly lead this team somewhere far? I think he stopped thinking and started reacting a little bit better because you kind of saw, you know, just going back to the Mercy game and with this game as well, he didn't think a lot. He just ran the offense. He just got into the hands of his playmakers. When he was with, when he was, they were on the road against the midshipmen. There was a lot of thinking because it's the elements. Okay, okay, I got to protect the ball. It's like, well, it's like you know, I get, do I need to run? Do I need to throw? It was just a lot of thinking going on in his head on the road. So when he came back home, played against the Georgia State team, uh, by all means, were you know a big, uh, you know, gave a big thought. Uh, Effort, excuse me, to yeah. NC State before to come coming to Memphis. You he you needed you needed for him to get back to that mode where he's not thinking, just reacting. And you kind of saw that on display, even with uh, Demonte Coxie for six catches, a hundred yeah. and twenty three yards, and two touchdowns. And one of those touchdowns was like on a was on a, a was it like a fade route yeah. on the opposite uh, end of the hash throw. Like he could make the throws. It's just it's up here in the head for him, and, and I think he can do that. And I think one thing, too, that's so powerful about this offense is that when, when, when Brady is comfortable in his own skin, he gets everybody going. And when you got a running back like Henderson doing the things that he's doing, this offense is really dynamic. Look at all the different targets. Demonte Coxie, Tony Parker, Slade, Taylor, uh, Gibson, Magnifico, Kenny Gangwell. Even he got a, uh, even even he got some action as well. Yeah. So it's like everybody, all hands on deck on this offense, everybody got some touches last uh, the other day. Yeah, and you mentioned it's the running game because okay. we, we talked about this all season long mm -hmm. like not all season long but just the start of the season into the off season we talked about it like we got it you gotta get Henderson going gotta get Taylor going gotta get Pollard going and even with Gangwood we gotta get him going too because he he stepped up big over fall camp getting those guys going getting that offensive line moving downhill will help Brady a lot because it will allow him to manage the game a little bit better because he'll now know that 
teams are just going to load the box because they know that Henderson's a great back. They know that Taylor is a big physical guy. They know that Pollard's another fast, shifty guy in the backfield. So having the, those guys, or having the defense adjusting to those guys, leaving one-on-one -on -one opportunities yeah. to a DeMonte Cox who had a big game, a Antonio Gibson who you will see later on in the season where his body is going to show a McCann Slade could come in and make a big impact in the slot. So you're going to see those guys. You just we got to stick to the running game and make it happen. And if there's anything that we could take away from this game that would be somewhat of a negative, it was the amount of penalties that they racked up, the Memphis Tigers. And I want to get your point on this really quickly. The Memphis Tigers had a total of 10 penalties, costing them 79 yards. Before I get your opinion, this is what Mike Norville had to say about the penalties and what he thinks about it moving forward. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's something we talk about. You know, the the uh, you know, we we emphasize a ton to try to eliminate that. Um, some of the some of the things uh, I, you know we'll we'll go back and reevaluate on film on how we can coach it better. Or, uh, you know, how our guys can put themselves in a better position. Um, but uh, you know, our guys are working hard at it. We've had the first two games. I uh, thought our dis our, our discipline uh, has has really showed up. That, that we're taking into account uh, the the uh, eliminating those penalties. But I, I thought they're we'll get that correct. You heard from Norville. Basically, he's saying, hey, my team is disciplined. They're going to work on that in practice. But when you look further down the road, right, UCF, Mizzou, some of these bigger opponents, better opponents, do you think they will kind of hone in on some of these penalties? Because, again, 10 penalties for 79 yards, that could definitely be a difference maker. In the yeah, game. I can – you can see – I can visualize, like, the defense trying to baiting the offensive line to jump off sides. Or you can see, like, a couple, uh, you know, Offensive procedures that should have been cleaned up, but I think overall, I think I think the team will be fine. I mean, you, you're dealing with a veteran group. The offensive line, they returned four to five starters on the offensive line. Even Dylan Parham, who is a redshirt freshman, he's looking like a seasoned vet. So I think offensive line, tight ends, they will be fine along the line. Just got to communicate better. As far as like having procedural moves like holdings or. Uh, too many men on the offensive line right. or too many false men starts, that, false starts thing, and yeah. stuff. Like, you know, all, all of that is going to work itself out. I think the players are still trying to get a feel for how they're going to react or how they're going to play with each other mm -hmm. while in the game. So, again, we're, we're three games in. Yeah. So, 10 penalties, yeah. I mean, Coach Norvell doesn't – really doesn't want to see that on right. the stat sheet, but I think they will figure it out and they can, will clean up some of those mistakes. Because penalties will be part of the game. It just – how you, how are you going to uh, adjust moving forward? Very true. Well, as you mentioned, we're three games in. Going into week four, what's your quick thoughts? Memphis, South Alabama, Saturday, 7 p.m. <laughs> what's your thoughts? I mean, no offense to South Alabama, but this is another uh, cupcake win for the Tigers. This is same way with Mercer and Georgia State. These are teams that you're supposed to beat at home soundly. Right now, yeah. I think like the line is like 27 and a half points yeah, yeah. favoring uh, Memphis. So this is an easy opponent for the Tigers to win. Big opponent before heading into conference play against Tulane. I think the Tigers will win this game pretty soundly, just like as they did against Mercer and Georgia State. And again, we want to thank you all for joining us here uh, with Tiger News and the Daily Homesman and Sports Desk. Zach, again, I definitely appreciate you coming in on today talking about this. Again, Memphis beat Georgia State Panthers 59-22. to And, I mean, we can rant about this all day long, right? <laughs> I mean, there, I mean there, there was a lot of good things that, that you could point out. Like, yeah. 21 points in the first half. You didn't let them score a touchdown until the second quarter, so... For or, sure. And that was the only touchdown the entire game. So, I mean, there was a lot of good things that go around. So, it was it was pretty exciting to see them getting back into those into the 50 and 60 point range. I agree. Speaking of ranting, our colleague here at the Daily Helmsman, Raven Moore, she has her own show on Tiger News Network. It's called Raven's Rant. Here's the clip right here. Of it. I'm not calling Brady White trash. However... If all you gotta do is just check it down to them and they bust off for 70 yards, you're gonna have a nearly 500 yard game pretty quickly. Anybody could do that. If I was throwing to them, I could do that. Riley Ferguson is here, right? Brady's right here. When a good quarterback's players aren't doing what they need to do, he regresses as well. A great quarterback, it doesn't matter if his receivers are dropping every ball, running backs just cannot find a hole. They're getting stopped. A great quarterback can still find a way to elevate his team to win the game. Right now, I see Brady in the realm of a good quarterback 
more so than a great quarterback. <laughs> man, that's some great content right there. Ravens rent, the perfect person to have that kind of a show, man. I'm telling you, that's going to be some good stuff. Yeah, but she she has a fiery personality once you get to know her personally. And she's, like, very convicted on a lot of different things. Like, whether, like you mentioned, like, baseball, football, like, it, like what, whatever she got going on in her head, that's what she's going to say to you. So. Yeah, I mean, again, I sit right beside her in the press box, and it doesn't matter what's going on. If she starts talking about those Baltimore Ravens, oh, oh my She God. loves her Ravens. Yes, she does. Dirty birds fly, fly, eagles fly. I thought. thought wait, wait, that's the wrong thing. That's team. Atlanta. <laughs> oh. Rise up. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, thank you for joining us again for our second edition of the DH Post Game Show. I'm your sports editor here at the Daily Helmsman, Joshua Benson, sitting alongside Zach Boy. Zach, thanks again for coming over from the sports desk to join us. It's no problem. I'm here all day, baby. Yes, sir. And make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms powered by Tiger News. We'll see you next week.